Welcome back. I'm TI with TradeX Academy. We're here to talk about Ethereum today. The big conversation around Ethereum, it's trending, it's picking up speed. We're, we're really, everybody's starting to pay attention. It is going to be a major conversation for the next couple months. We're waiting on the merge, but what is it? What does it mean? Are we going to see cheaper fees right away? Will we be able to move through to proof of stake completely, instantaneously? What will happen to all the miners? We're going to get to all those questions very, very shortly. If you like our videos, please hit that like button and subscribe. Let's get into it. Let's get into what this is all about. Ethereum.org is the place to start with all the information you could possibly want to know about Ethereum. If you're not familiar with it, you probably haven't been in crypto too long. It is basically the cornerstone of decentralized finance, the cornerstone of where NFTs uh, grew out of and were created. It is also the second largest by market cap, uh, coming up to $409 billion market cap, uh, very quickly starting to catch up to Bitcoin. We have seen a slump against Bitcoin in the recent past, but Ethereum versus Bitcoin has technically broken out versus Bitcoin and might be set to head up to uh, to its previous highs or maybe set new highs altogether. We're not here to look at the technical analysis today though. We wanna talk about this merge. What is it? What's coming? Back to ethereum.org and the merge is outlined very quickly here. And we will see some dates at the bottom of the screen there, uh, kind of spoiling the surprise, which isn't much of a surprise anymore because the merge on Ethereum is actually trending right now. And so hopping on that trend, we better educate ourselves, figure out what's coming and see if there's any benefit for us as traders or investors in this market. The merge itself will eventually bring the Ethereum mainnet to merge with the beacon chain. This is their proof of stake chain. Uh, this will mark the, the beginning of kind of the end for miners on Ethereum. This will bring about the, the turn from proof of work mining, which is what Bitcoin is done with using mining equipment, mining farms, and moving it over to proof of stake where the holders of the coins are the ones that are going to uh, benefit from the fees on the network. The blocks will get developed without an actual block reward. And we're gonna see a huge shift in the supply and demand structure of how Ethereum works. Right now, we already know if we go back very, very quickly, just to give you a quick summary, EIP, that's an Ethereum Improvement Proposal, 1559 was proposed and Ethereum started burning a portion of their fees. This proposal will stay in place when they move to proof of stake. So not only will there not be a block reward being provided, there will also actually be a continuation of the burning of some of those fees. Very interesting. That in essence will drive us into a state where the supply is dwindling. In fact, it, it is in the end and going to end up being a deflationary asset, uh, being deflationary by almost 0.5%. Whereas Bitcoin itself sitting right now, as far as inflationary rate goes, is about 1.7. So Ethereum will be four times more um, inflation resistant and deflationary than Bitcoin is itself. There is our little surprise, which is not much of a surprise anymore. This merge is set to show up in the second quarter of 2022. That's right. The second quarter of 2022 starts this week. Uh, we move into April and that ends the first financial quarter of 2022. And we are finally starting to see some turn in the market, some energy coming back after a very, very slow start to the year. Now, this isn't just come about. This hasn't just dropped in. This is actually the second stage. And one of the developers over on Twitter here talks about these three stages. The beacon chain was the first stage, and this was implemented and put onto the test nets, multiple test nets on Ethereum, and has been tested extensively. The last test net has finally wrapped up with almost zero issues at all. Uh, they had one very, very, very minor issue that they believe is fully resolved and it is ready to go to the mainnet. And that is where the merge occurs. And that is step two. This is where the mainnet and beacon chain actually merge. So the Ethereum mainnet, where a lot of the, uh, all of the current activity takes place is actually going to move over and start using proof of stake. Now I will make a note on this that Joseph Lubin, the head of consensus, one of the largest developers on top of Ethereum has said it is expected 
in the second quarter. We have heard others mention June as the possible date, uh, but he did slip in there that if it doesn't show up in the second quarter, it is definitely coming in the third quarter. And uh, as Ethereum has been famous for, we probably shouldn't hold our breath for an absolute certain launch in the second quarter or June, but it is coming very, very soon. The third and final stage to what's coming is sharding. And that's where we're going to actually start seeing some scaling happening. The downside to all of this is that the hype and excitement around this is based largely around fees that we have to pay just to use Ethereum. It comes largely around how quickly Ethereum is able to process transactions. And that's the scaling that sharding is going to start helping with. We're in the merge point, And the, the catch here is that I'm not a lot of solution is going to come to these problems just yet. We are not going to see a resolution just yet. There is some consideration that the fees might uh, stabilize, become lower. There's some consideration that the scalability will be able to process a little more efficiently, but the sharding is kind of the next level for that. But even when the sharding arrives, we are still waiting for that big transition into the balancing of the fees and a possible increase in the speed of the network. However, that is largely going to be done through layer two technology. And there is one layer two technology that has been taking the cake the largest in the space right now, and that is Polygon, the Matic token. And it's one that I'm keeping a very close eye on. While its chart is not necessarily the best out there, it is the front runner outside of a couple others with a lot of money behind them, Arbitrum and, uh, and, and a couple others that are really going to set the stage for where Ethereum goes from here. Now, Ethereum, it's a two and a half month high as Google searches show a peak in interest for the merge. Yes, the merge is trending and uh, Ethereum is, is right on the forefront of, of everything that's going on in this space right now. This is the beginning of that Ethereum 2.0, which they have since kind of renamed. The Ethereum merge has, uh, has kind of uh, saturated our, our media recently and we're, we're ready to go. What do I have to do to stake my Ethereum? Well, if you're staking directly to Ethereum, you are going to need to deposit 32 Ethereum into the, uh, the valid uh, software and, and the network. The problem here is that most people don't have 32 Ethereum. Anybody with us in our Discord knows where they can stake Ethereum in fractional amounts, uh, 0.01 Ethereum if you want, or 4 Ethereum, or 0.4 Ethereum. It doesn't matter how much. There are lots of places that will earn you very good returns. However, the most profitable place is to lock it up in Ethereum for the near, uh, near future. And there are some... Um, hesitations there from institutional investors, because there will be a bit of a lockup period and some issues or some questions around when you're going to be able to pull it out. The return will be about eight and a half to 12 and a half percent initially, and will probably fluctuate a little bit through those ranges uh, for the first few months, maybe the first year. And uh, after that, we will see the percentages come back to a more stable amount, likely around four to six percent um, in the long term for Ethereum staking. Uh, institutions seem to be hesitant. They're kind of waiting to see what's next, but retail investors largely don't care about that at all. 10 million Ethereum is now locked in Ethereum 2.0's staking contract. Over $26 billion worth of Ethereum is already wrapped up, ready to go to staking and ready to start driving the proof of stake and the merge for Ethereum in the very near future. As I mentioned before, there is a lot of Ethereum tied up in a lot of different places and decentralized finance is one of them. They make up the largest portion of decentralized finance total value locked in coins at nearly 55%. This is something to consider because the amount locked in DeFi is flexible. It could in theory be retrieved, unlocked, and put back into um, Ethereum 2.0's contract. That is a huge amount. In fact, it's about four times more than what is currently already, or sorry, uh, yes, about four times more than what is currently already being locked into the Ethereum 2.0 smart contract. And we might see a shift out of the total value locked in DeFi for Ethereum into the smart contract uh, to stake right on top of Ethereum by a lot of these users. Perhaps it's enough of an adventure, perhaps it's enough of, of, of a reward, and perhaps it's just what they feel like they morally need to do to support the Ethereum network. We're going to have to keep an eye on how this unfolds. It is not expected there will be many hitches, but it is not 
promised to be an, at any one given point just yet. We won't be given a whole lot of notice, but what this could do is drive that hype cycle into Ethereum, kind of perpetuate what we've seen as a breakout here on the Ethereum versus Bitcoin chart and start watching Ethereum do better percentages than Bitcoin. While their alts are probably the best bet to be trading against Bitcoin to build up sats or even US dollars because your percentages will be higher, Ethereum is one of those investment opportunities that a lot of people wonder if, its utility and its, its access to all different kinds of industry will provide it a market cap greater than Bitcoin and trigger something called the flippening. Watch what happens when Ethereum gets going and listen to that conversation. You're going to hear that word, the flippening, come up again. And when you do, we'll be right here to answer more questions about that. If you have any more questions about this at all, hit the links below, join us in the Discord for more discussion. If you have any other issues with our video or its content, please drop into the comments, drop by our Discord, or let us otherwise know. We really appreciate you dropping by. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe on your way out. Thanks for watching.